Hi, welcome to Servotronics Teach Pendant Tutorial. I will show you how to operate this Teach Pendant. First, you need to log in. So I click on the Start TP button. I choose which user type I want. For example, let's start with Programmer. And Password. At the moment, I have A. I click Login. And the first screen I see on the Teach Pendant is the Jog screen. Teach Pendant is built of several screens. You have Jog, Program, Data, I.O., Diagnostics, Errors, and Settings screens. And then you also see some of the peripheral stuff. An indication of the mode selector. Here you see the letter M, a shortcut for Manual. We can change it to Automatic or External. Now we will demonstrate on manual mode. We have here the dead man. Capital letter D. The dead man is a switch that you see here. The dead man has three modes. Not pressed, halfway, and fully pressed. In order to move the robot, we need to press the dead man only halfway. And you see when I click on the dead man, the D changes color from green to red. We also have here an error message. For example, if I try to jog, it tells me that the group is not enabled. I also have here an enable button. I can click on it. Now you see the robot is enabled. You see all the joints. We have your six joints of the Puma robot. They are all colored in green, which means they are enabled. If I click the dead man, I can now move the robot. And if I do not click the dead man, then I cannot jog. It tells me that dead man is released. So the main functionality of the jog screen is naturally to be able to jog the robot. We need to choose which motion element we want to run. We have your single axes or our groups that we have here. Now we want to move our Puma robot. We need to choose which frame we want to move. So we have Joint and Tool Working Frame and World. We can choose which tool we want to apply on the robot flange. At the moment, we will leave it Null Tool because we don't have anything programmed, any values of the other tools that we have. Same issue for Base. We will choose Null Base. We can choose velocity, for example, let's say 60, 63% of the maximum allowed velocity in Teach Pendant. So now I jog the robot in jog coordinates. And let's just do some kind of motion examples. Now, this is jog frame. I can also switch to Cartesian frame. Let's choose Motion World Frame. And in World Frame, I can move in directions which are aligned with X, Y, and Z directions of the room. So in X direction, I can move the robot and all the joints are moving so that the robot tooltip will be manipulated to move in X direction. Same in Y direction. And Z direction. Now we also have orientation angles. We can move the robot in yo pitch roll angles. There you have your roll. And another. Another example of moving the robot around the certain location but with different orientations. So, we talked about how to jog the robot, how to move it, and now I want to talk about user projects. We have the user project, where all the files of the user are stored in a project under one name. And if we want to open a project, we need to switch to the program screen. In the program screen, we need to switch the mode selector to automatic. Then we can open project 
or we can build a new project. And just for this example, I will name it temp for temporary. And now we have a new project named temp. You see, we have a new UPG, user program file, and ULB, user library file, that we have under the name temp. Now we have the project temp, and we also have automatically a domain, a user domain, which is named temp. If we look at the data screen, see, we have here our new domain, temp, and we can choose which domain we want to work with. Now in the data screen, I have temp, and I want to assign a new location type. Locations, joints, longs, doubles, and strings. All of these are variable types, which the user can create and edit. So I choose locations, and I want to edit a new one with this plus sign. Variable name that we have here. Let's call it lock, short for location. Lock one, let's call it. And then we can assign the values. If we don't assign any value, I have a default of zero location. Then I can also do the same with joints. Okay, so with joints, the same trick. But here I don't have, it's not location X, Y, Z, it's joint. It's the actual value of the motors with the gears. So each one of the motors has a certain value of rotation. Now if I assign a new array, let's call it pause, shortcut for position, but I want it to be an array. I assign here is array with four entries. So I have the new position array and I can edit it. Let's say I can change this. J1, for example. Now you see J1 has changed. I can do this to all other locations, all other positions, but I want to show you how I use the teach pendant to teach positions, which is the main purpose of this device. So I switch back to the jog screen. So we have here domain in the jog screen, and we can choose which domain we want to work with. And as mentioned before, we will stay with the temporary domain that we have, which is the name of our project. You see, we have here now in the teach option, we have location one, because we're working now in world frame. If we switch to joint frame, then I will have the array position which presents only the joint type of variables. And here I can choose which one of these array entries I want to choose. And I can teach position. If I teach this position, you see I have the new values of all the robot joint coordinates. They are assigned to this variable. If I switch to a different one, for example, position three, these are not yet initialized. They are all set to the default zero value. But in this jog screen, I don't use it only for teaching, but I also use it for moving. When I click move, the robot will move to this position. In our example, it's the position of zero values for all the joints, which means the home position of the robot. So we talked about teach positions and move and joint interpolated motion to save positions. But we can also move the robot in straight lines. I have position two. And if I move the robot, I can move it in straight lines or regular motion. So we move it in a straight line and the robot executes straight line interpolation motion to position number two, for which we have here the values. We will now talk about tool align. Tool alignment is the procedure of aligning the tooltip with the World Cartesian origin axis, which are X, Y, and Z. So if I move the robot to a certain position, 
and I want the tooltip to be aligned, I have here a feature called Tool Align. And when I choose Tool Align, I can choose which axis I want to align the robot to. I choose X axis and I align. In case I cannot align, it tells me why, if the angle is too big or the axis is already aligned. Okay, now you see, we're done with the alignment procedure. All the angles are with 90 degree intervals. And the robot tooltip is aligned with the XY axis of the wall. That was to align, and now we'll talk about tool calibration. Tool calibration is the procedure of assigning the values of tool dimensions that is connected to the tooltip of the robot. We need to move the robot to a certain position where the tooltip touches an arbitrary solid point in the robot workspace. And we chose here a sharp edge to have better indication about the location of the tooltip. I click here, plus one, and it tells me that one point is added. Then I move the robot again. I move it to the same location, but with a different configuration. And now the tooltip is pointing again at the same location, but this time with a different orientation. I click again on another point. I do the same trick. I choose which tool I want to assign the new dimensions. And I choose Tool 3. I click on Calibrate. When I will click on Calibrate, I will have two results. One is that the Tool 3 variable will get the data of tool coordinates XYZ. And also the tool will be assigned which means that the XYZ coordinates will be changed also. So I changed tool calibration and I have new dimensions XYZ. If I look at the data screen in the tool domain, in the data screen tool domain, I see all the values of the tool that I did this calculation. So this is tool calibration, and now I can move the robot around a certain point. Now we will talk about the program screen, how we program the robot from the teach pendant. If I go to the program screen, so we switch to the program screen and we're in manual mode. If we want to be able to write our program, we must switch to automatic mode. We have the program, which is the user program UPG. And here we have edit mode, where we can write our text in the graphic interface. So let's try to write a while loop. In this while loop, we will generate motion. So for the while loop, we have this while command. Let me just comment this out. So we will now write what motion we want to generate. So for the motion, we have here interpolation, which type of motion we want. We choose regular move and I choose the robot Puma. I want to move to position number one. And I insert the move. This move is written in text. I can also write this text here with this keyboard. It depends if it's convenient or not for the user. Now I will add another move. Before we do this, 
just for the indentation. Now I want to move again the Puma robot to position number 2. Automatically, the index of the array jumps from 1 to 2 because it assumes that we want to move to the next location. We insert the move. And let's say I want to move to position number 4. No reason, just for the sake of the test. So now we have a while loop with motion. The robot is enabled. If I want to load the project, here is load. Load to load the project. I can unload it here. And I run. And the robot moves according to the position which we assigned. Additional features that we have here in the Teach Pendant, we have the I.O. screen. The I.O. screen tells us digital outputs and digital inputs in our system. We can set here the I.O.s. It tells us which motion device this I.O. is related to. And we can scroll here to see all the list of these digital I.O.s. Now, we also have here the Diagnostic screen. In the Diagnostic screen, we have here Devices State, which are the motion devices. In this case, you can see here we have six EtherCAT devices. We have the Control Board Temperature, the Power Board Temperature, State, if it's enabled or not, and Access Mode and Drive Mode. This is Position Mode at the moment. The other slaves are simulated. Master state tells us the MC state that we have here. Cycle time, number of motion slaves, lost frames, and status. We have the errors screen where we can scroll and see the list of errors that we had. We can clear the list and we can also clear drive fault in case one of the motion devices has a fault. The last screen is the settings. In Settings, we see the version of the library and the Java version, and also the TP client version. With Administrator Type, we also have here some other settings that we'll see, like Inactivity Timeout, in case we don't touch the Teach Pendant for a certain amount of minutes. We have here Keep Alive Timeout, Refresh Cycle with MC. We can choose Language, at the moment, we have English and Chinese implemented. And we can set new passwords for all other users. This can only be done by the administrator type of user. So, that's Servatronics Teach Pendant Tutorial.